Welcome to Documentation Office Hours. It's the 16th of December, 2021. Reminder, we abide by the Jenkins Code of Conduct. Glad to have you here. Today's topics, um, news if any. Oh, no, let's see, wrong, wrong agenda, sorry, Meg. Here we go. And Elizabeth, let's be sure we know that you're <coughs> attending today. And Zenob was with us briefly. All right, great. So topics I had, contributor license agreement process, weekly change log, LTS change log, modernizing a, blog, a plugin. Meg, are there other topics we should add to the list? Um, could I be really selfish? I've got a broken local build. Can ooh, ooh yes, back? let's put that top of the list, even better. Okay, fixing a broken docs site build. Very good, yes. Excellent, that's a great, great working session. Any other topics? Okay, let's, let's take those then. And so let's get started on the first. Meg, do you want to share your screen? How would you like to approach sure. investigating it? Sure. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing and we'll let you share yours. Okay. And there we go. And actually okay. for, oh, hi, sign up is bad. Should we quickly show Elizabeth what happens when we do a, should we go back and show her how we build, et cetera? We're, we're gonna need, we're gonna need to see that anyway, because I'll wanna see exactly that. The message you're showing says that there's probably a syntax error in the ADOC files. Yep. And, and so we're going to have to show her how it builds anyway. So yes, let's do that. Okay. So Elizabeth, our documentation so, is, is maintained in ASCII doc format, which means it has to be converted before it turn, gets turned into HTML. And what Meg's going to show is the, the build process that we use to do that conversion. Okay, so let me, um, actually, let me show you Hey, are you familiar with ASCII doctor at all? Uh, no, I'm not. Muted. No, I'm not. Ah, there you are. Okay. Um, so this is actually, let's go back. Let me show you what we're looking at. Let's go back to the very beginning here. Um, da, 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 da. Get things. I've got, I have too many tabs open. That's the way of my life. Um, there we go. This will do it. So our documentation is displayed. If you go to Jenkins, let's actually just go up to Jenkins IO. We go to Jenkins IO and click documentation. We get this. And the piece I'm working on is managing Jenkins. And this is what we currently have there, which is not a lot. And then we go on, it's sort of miscellaneous. It's all sort of a, a lot of good information, but kind of a mess structurally. So I am working to turn this chapter. This is, this will be the index. So um, the source for this uh, is down locally in my thing in content doc book managing. And so Meg, as a cheat, as a cheat, could you over on the web page scroll to the bottom of the web page? Uh huh. And, uh -huh. and on the bottom of the web page, there's this improve this page link. Click that, and it will uh -huh. take us to the page in GitHub where the source code for this page is maintained. Uh -huh. Now, Meg, you st Meg still has to go back to her terminal to look at the, the source files outside GitHub, but this gives us a picture of ah, there's that page. Right. Okay. Back to your back to your editor yes. now. Right. Good to idea. Terminal. Good idea. So that um, so we get um, if we go back, let's see, for this managing Jenkins, I believe this is called a chapter. We mm -hmm. have these, and if we look here, um, down here we see um, system configuration. Um, this is the index.adoc, which is the first file in each of these big sections. And this is what generates this. Um, another one that I recently worked on is similar in this chapter 
and this is where we're aiming it goes through the general material so there is it um you get it set up so that i can build locally ascii doc is it's not it's similar to markup it's a little bit different but you'll see we have for instance a header the top the chapter title is a single equals mark um down a sub can have where we get to um it's very we have links are coded like this it's pretty easy coding but it is all text-based now if i want to see what it looks like when i build um i just keep this running all the time but let's kill it um and we do make run is all we need to do and it runs up and then normally with that running i can see exactly what i did on my local let's see it takes a minute to zoom up um and boy Arr, go away, go away, go away. And there we go. And it should display at localhost 4242 what I have just immediately written. So there, that should be done. And I refresh to get the latest. Except my latest is an error right now. So, mm -hmm. okay, so this is the file I'm looking at. And I'm just going through to find out. I figured it because it was working. I figured it was probably a coding thing. Yeah. But so what, this looks like it's a Ruby error for what it's worth. Well, and, and so Meg, let's take a exit out of the editor and let's take a look at it from what's changed from the known working state. So git diff. Yeah, let's do a git diff. And so what this is going to tell us is what's oh go up go up several levels though, Meg. I want to see what's changed overall. So right now, because you're at, at one of the directories nested inside, I want to see the, the upper level. So go oh, up. Oh, you want to see it that from uh, Jenkins IO directory. Exactly. Okay. So here we are at Jenkins IO. Just so you know, at the top directory here, um, we see content. That's where we go for this. But we have a guy's contributing file with details about how you contribute. Um, that's where the make file is, et cetera. And here's our git diff. Okay, so over. there we go. All right, so it looks like what you're you're wanting to do is you're wanting to move system properties and change system time zone and add about Jenkins and system info. Yes. Okay, so so all right. Okay, so then let's let's look for and that looks like it should work if there is a file named about dash Jenkins. Is there a file named about dash Jenkins that you've added? Yes. Okay. About dash Jenkins dot a doc. Okay, just just do a git status or just keep scrolling through the list. Just add your question. Your answer is great. Okay, so keep going. Okay, continue. Okay, so script approval has changes in it. Keep going. Let's see. I don't see an obvious problem there. Huh, interesting. Oh, you, but wait a sec, but you said, okay, so quit out of that and do a git status. Ah, okay, good. All right. Doc book manage. Okay, show me that show me that the log of the make run again. Let's see if we can guess from it what's going wrong. Let's see where do we where did we start? You know what would be nice. So scroll I, upwards. What I'm gonna do is do it and start the clear screen. Yeah, there you go. 
then we can get back to the beginning more easily. Yeah, and for my benefit, if you could widen your terminal to to be broader, yeah, full size, full screen would be great. Thanks. Okay, pause. Couldn't I? Oh yes, look, spelling error. Sys ten dash oh, info. Where? Could not find section file. Sys ten dot info. You want uh -huh. sys ten dot info dash info. Oh goodness, and that is probably in that. It's in that that YAML right. file that defines the chapter, which is chapter dot YAML. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Okay. Try it again. And let's see. Well, but there may be other things going on as well. So do the make okay. run again. Oh, you got to go back up to the right level. So yeah, switch back to the the other the other window, right? Uh, or where? Uh, no, go to the one oh, where your make run is where, running. Right. Are you, oh, you want to see make run or? Yeah, because having made uh, that change, that's a, a like a structural change. So interrupt this and restart it. So Elizabeth, Elizabeth, as a side comment here, um, this is one of those places where technical skills just keep working for you, right? There, this is developing technical skills in all sorts of ways. We're doing diagnosis on documentation build process. Okay, open it in your web browser. Let's see if it's better. Let's see. And reload. And okay, good. Yep. And there we go, except we landed in developer guides. So now to see your content, Meg, take it up to document the documentation drop down. Ah. Okay, we'll do this. And it and was, yeah, it was it's managing, managing Jenkins, right? So we should right. see over on the There we go. And there's system information and there's about Jenkins. Yep. Excellent. And there's the new text. Okay. Good. I can get back and work on this. Would it would it be useful? I'm pretty close to being able to, to be ready to do a PR. Um, would it help, Mark? Should we walk her through the whole process? Do you want me to push this now? Mark that work in progress? Yeah, this would be an interesting that, one. So yeah, absolutely. Would Why that be not? interesting for Elizabeth? Well, Elizabeth, is that interesting to you? So Elizabeth, I'm not sure if you heard Meg's question. She was wondering, would you like to see us submit a pull request so that Meg can start us, show us how we go through the process of submitting um, a pull request that we'll use to, to capture this work? I think, Elizabeth, you're muted. Yeah, sure. Okay. I, okay. I'm kind of um, having some issues with my network. Sorry about that. Ah, oh, no well, problem. Well, and, and because this is being recorded, you can watch it later on YouTube as well. All right. All right. We Great. will post it to YouTube so it will be available on YouTube and you can watch it later. Also, I have a bunch of tabs open. So first I make sure that I don't have any files open. I get everything closed. And then I'm back in my Jenkins IO, the source of my clone of the repo. It's a fork mm -hmm. clone, by the way. And so we do a git status. And this tells me I've modified these four files and I'm adding two new files. And so I do a git add dot. Are you familiar with git? Yes, I okay. used it at some point, but I okay. stopped. So I've forgotten most things. Right. Yes. I Mark Mark is really good at it. I sort of know how to do what I need to do, and as soon as he goes out of that, I'm crying to Mark for help. So, um, I do get commit where I can say, um.
call it a chapter, right, Mark? Uh-huh, right. And now the way I'm set up, I do get push, which doesn't work, but it gives me the command that does. So I copy that. I paste it there. And we run. And then I need to get that back down small size for the whoops. Hey. No, 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 no. Okay, let's go over here. Um and oh, that's not it. Let's, ah, so now I go over to github.com for this repo. Actually, this is my clone of the repo. Is that where I want to be? Or sh Mark, should I be back at the main one? Should I be at my stack scribe? Uh, let's see. So, so I think that that compare and pull request will let you will will submit to the upstream repository. Try it. Okay. Let's see. Let's try it. Okay. So we click there. Okay. And so yeah, right. Because here, here it says see, oh. base repository over on the left hand side above where your cursor is. It tells us it's targeting jenkins dash info slash jenkins ah. so it's doing it's doing the right thing yep okay and i'm gonna mark this draft work in progress mark yeah either the whip is whip or draft is fine either one okay because there's a there's actually a, a checkbox we'll use on uh, on github later that marks it as a draft right okay so that is the content i put um, here we have this, typically we type in a little bit more um, here. I won't do that for now because I can go back and edit it later, okay? Um, and, but here we see the history and then you can scroll down and you can see everything that is in this pull request. And it's displayed on the left is what used to be there with the pink being material that's been deleted or replaced. Um, the right shows you what's new. And so the one caveat that's a little confusing at first is it's not true in this case, but sometimes the pink stuff has been moved and it shows it's deleted and then shows up new later. But but you can give a quick glance and make sure that there aren't any surprises there. And if it's what we want, um, I click create pull request. And there it is. And now if I go in up here, you can see all of the pull requests that are currently open for this repo. Mm -hmm. And there's this one up at the top. So now open that and let's see if you can mark it draft already. So open your open your new pull request. Okay, and- Yes, there it is. See that reviewers over on the reviewers side, uh, it says copy editors. And then uh -huh. two lines below that, there's a, a link you can click convert to draft. Aha. Uh -huh. Click that because that tells people I don't intend for you to you to merge this yet. Right. Okay. And convert to draft then. Uh huh. And I can also we have. And that, Mark, do you want to explain what the labels are? That probably is better than me doing it. Yeah. In in this repository, the labels may not be as helpful as as in other repositories, but here we use labels to categorize what kind of thing it's doing. So Meg's putting the work in progress label as a way of helping others find this and realize it's not yet ready for review. Okay. In, in code repositories, it's pretty common for us to label something as a, an enhancement or as a bug fix or as a documentation change. And then you see now, if you look here, here's the work in progress uh, label. And here also it's marked as draft. Right. As opposed to some others or script securities that that's ready to go. Um, oh, is that ready for review? I, yes. I okay, so I let's take, let's take the, take the draft word out. Let's do the edit on that one. And Take the take the take the the word draft out of the summary. Wait a minute. Oh, okay. Um. Ah, I'm trying. This stuff has been going on for so long. It's right, it's right. This on one's a long, very, very long lived people. request, right? Yes. 
So I should go look at it and see if, oh, and I've got some comments that I've missed because it's sat here and I don't check it every day anymore. So probably I should be draft on it for a little bit. Okay, so it can we stay need, I, We need to go back and look on those and see. It would be lovely. There's a whole set of them that might go elsewhere. So. Any questions, Elizabeth? Was this all clear? High level. No questions um, for now. Just as Max said, I would um, also watch it on the YouTube channel. Right. Great. Um, and if I have um, questions, I'll reach out to Zainab or I'll um, also send a mail to Mark. Have any is it too early, you. Mark, or do we want to try to get her set up? Or are you probably going to set her up for the report? Yeah. Which was, might be more practical. I was practical. going to say that. All right. Say to set her up, Zainab, or that it's too early? What, um, what? Um, kind of PC are you using, um, Elizabeth? Is it a Windows or Windows? I'm using the Windows. Uh, okay. Hmm. So there are complications doing. Zenob is very experienced with complications <laughs> doing doc development with Windows. Aren't you, yeah. Zenob? <laughs> yes. So you can say that again. <laughs> All right. I'm going to stop sharing. Okay. And. Uh... Yeah, so, so Elizabeth, my guess is, just, just me guessing, but my guess is actual contributions to documentation would probably want to wait until after you've connected with the events team and after you've started, started finding where you need to contribute, then we can coach you through it. Would that be okay? Yeah, shut up, very fine. Because our I events team members funny. sometimes have to submit but they oftentimes can actually do the things they need to do through the GitHub web pages instead of Meg is Meg is a top grade documentation creator and she does all sorts of documentation. So she has to have it locally. Many of our outreach people make their changes through the GitHub user interface without even having a local copy like Meg does. So, so when you get to the point where you're interested in in submitting a change, let us know and we'll we'll help you through it. All right, thank you very much. Much appreciated, thank you. Great. So Meg, we've got your build working. Should we take on the next, next agenda topics? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna share screen and let's take a look at them. So, so there was this one, which was a contributor license agreement process. So Meg, this is just me and you in a conversation. Okay. The, we, I had proposed that Meg, Kristen, and Diraj have been proposed as copy editors. which is a privilege, a, a position with extra capabilities for the Jenkins website. And that needs, needs a contributor license agreement. And so what we need to do is we need to have Meg and Kristen and Diraj, and Kristen's already done hers, so needs a, con a contributor license agreement submitted. And there's a process to do that um, right now, it may be best to wait for Easy CLA, a new way of doing it that's much easier. So, Meg, are you okay if we continue to wait for that? I think I we am. can. Okay, great. Then let's let's keep it that way. So I could show you um, one of our infrastructure contributors just submitted his uh, CLA the old way. And it's, it's heroic and painful and challenging. <laughs> and I'd rather not use the old way if we can avoid it. So, I... so we'll just wait for a little bit. What this is, is there's this really cool facility. It's from the Linux Foundation. And they take us through these whole, a, ser a small series of steps that lets you contribute your, let you submit your 
licensing your license agreement so that you say you're willing to contribute and that your work can be used by the project that you're contributing to. So that's that's how we'll be doing it when when Oleg turn, switches it on. Fabulous. Great. Okay, that topic's done. Very good. Do we have a rough estimate when that's going to be? Is it in a week? Do or not. It, it depends on Oleg's availability. Oleg's, yeah. He he mentioned yesterday he thought he might be able to do it even even yesterday, but I don't think it happened. And he's a very very busy guy with just starting a new job, so I don't know when. Yeah. It, even even if it takes two months, I think it's still better for us to wait right. than to to put you through the experience of the old way. Yeah, whenever we do it, if you guys want to use me as a guinea pig when we think we've got it up to go through and do the- Oh, one. oh, good. Excellent. Yeah, I, just for your info, you Colleen and I used it. So my wife and I did a test drive with it earlier ah. in the alpha test phase. So if that you're willing to be a test case is great. So Colleen's now a tester? Is now an yeah. official Well, member? Colleen is- Colleen is is the victim of many experiments in the, in our house. Yes, indeed. Please tell her hi. She's a wonderful person. I I will indeed. You I bet. I hope to have dinner with her again sometime. <laughs> and, and she hopes to have dinner with somebody other than me sometime. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So next topic then, uh, as part of Jenkins documentation office hours we regular do, regularly review the changes that have arrived as part of weekly contributions to the Jenkins core. And that's this thing, the automated change log. So what we do is we review it together and decide which things we need to change to correct this, to make it so that it will be the correct thing when the, sh the release ships. So here's the first. This says there's a change that we updated a component. And Meg, for me, I'd think this one is one we should just skip the change log on. I would think so, yeah. I don't know what users would do with, with the notion that we've updated the Apache Commons validator. So let's go find that, that pull request. Oops, wrong one. Did we explain that the the actual change log is generated automatically from comments? I did not. Very good point. So, so this pull request here is generated by a script that reads the changes that are being submitted to the software and automatically generates this thing as a document. So that we all we have to do is correct these things and they then become part of the change log automatically. So I'm going to add a label here, skip change log. And because I added that label, the next time this change log is generated, this entry will be moved from being visible to being hidden. Okay, next then is add links to report an issue in a plugin to the plugin manager. Oh, that's cool. Oh yeah. Okay, but so this should be oh. add links to plugin manager. Well, well, okay. Let's okay. let's go through okay. and talk to that one. So let's let's bring it up. It needs a it needs an ending full stop an ending. So here, so what I think it was is. Yes. Okay. So what they've done is they've extended the UI. See this blue text report an issue with this plugin mm -hmm. that allows the user to, with one click, report a bug report to that, that specific plugin. Wow. Now, now cool. let's, I want to see where, what Linky, well, we'll have to, I'll have to look to see what Linky did. So, so this one I think is a great improvement. Nice, nice job. So Let's get the text, for the phrasing right, ready for the, okay, so it says now add links to report an issue in a plugin to plugin manager. So 
what it's really done is added plugin man a plugin manager or added a plugin manager link or maybe it's report and issue link to each plugin in the plugin manager uh yeah that Give me better words, Meg. Report <coughs> an issue link. <coughs> I think that's good. I think that says what it is. Or there, like two plugins. Yes. Yeah. Um, now, did this actually add the link or did this add the capability to do it? It actually adds the link. That's the that's the elegant part of what he's done. Here, let me open open. So this. it's actually gone through and hit all seventeen hundred plugins already. Well, right? what it did is it's using data that's already available ah. and showing that data to the to the user. So the data which which plugin is which is already already there. Now let's see if I can find the the pull request was five three five eight. Okay. Okay, so the picture here, let me show you what this what this looks like today. Just a minute. Okay, so if we look at manage plugins on the version that he's proposing to change, it looks like this today. So he's looking at the install the vert tab. So here's the installed tab. Notice that it says, here's the plugin name and version number and a description, but there's no link here to report an issue. Ah, okay. And so what he's done is he's added report an issue with this plugin as a hyperlink. All right. Oh, very cool. So, so back to the re revising the, the change log. Are you okay with that as a- and it, as Actually, would if we lost that uh just make it add report an issue link do we need that a good yeah, yeah. that looks good to me delete the yeah. other one good okay i like excellent so then we we update that comment Yeah, all right. So next next one is bump groovy from 2.4.12 to 2.4.21. And that one I think just stays as it is. This is one Meg that we'll have to fix later when we right. add convert these things to hyperlinks as references. Right. But that I think is is a good description, and it yeah. ends with a full stop. So, do you want to note that in this minutes, like you do with the other? Oh one yes, else? yes, good idea. Right. Oh yes, very good. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we'll need reference links added to Groovy update entry after release. Good. Thank you. All right, so that, that part of the meeting is done. So we just reviewed the weekly change log and we made a few minor updates. Next then, LTS change log and upgrade guide. And this one, there's actually nothing for us to do except be aware that it's, the work has begun. So we just released 2.319.1 about a week ago. And this is now preparing for the next release, 2.319.2, that will happen in, Jan in January on the 12th. Kathy Chan is the release lead, and she started the checklist for us of things to be done 
And one of those items is prepare the LTS change log. And another is the LTS upgrade guide. And we'll, we'll work on those separately as we get closer to January 12. Cool. Okay. All right, and next topic was modernizing a plugin blog post. So we've got a, a concept that we would like to use. Well, we, we did a we did a a workshop for DevOps World 2021 that spent three or four hours showing people small and simple steps they can take to help them contribute to Jenkins as an open source contribution. The idea was we wanted things they could do in just minutes and that would actually help and make a difference. And so this by now 25 page document describes some of those steps and each of the steps is a doable thing. It's something that you can add a Jenkins file to the repository or update the parent palm and it tells you how to do it. What we're going to do then is convert this into a series of pages on Jenkins.io that will be a tutorial for new, new developers and new contributors. Right now, it's still work in progress. Uh, Jean-Marc's working on it, I'm working on it, Diraj is working on it, and we'll keep working on it. Marvelous. Those were the topics that we had for today that I was aware of. I don't have any content changes there, and I won't be able to work on this one probably for several days. Are there any other topics we should put on the agenda for today? I guess I have one question. Meg, I was with, with this meeting was specifically set so that our attendees in West Africa could, could reach into it after the end of their working day, but it's awfully early in the morning for you. Um, Elizabeth and Zinab, if, if your time generally won't allow you to attend, we may consider shifting this to later in the day so that Meg could attend and not have to get up so early. I can attend at this hour. Um, oh, you, this this time works for you? It does. It does. Oh, it's not okay, bad good. At all. Then we'll stay at this time. Great. Let's stay at this time. And uh, see, now I need to. We need to get back in touch. I got your mail, and I loved it. And before I lost, before I got it responded, I lost your email. Oh, okay. So, but um, actually, let me put in chat uh, my personal email. Okay. And uh, well, and, and I can just send both of you an email. I've got both your email addresses. If you need to connect again, I, I can certainly send you both an email that, okay. that that way you can connect. That was, I had no idea what this was for. I was so happy to see Zina there because you, I just enjoyed you so much last summer. So, when is, she, um, are we, we're doing another She Codes Africa? When is that this year? Yes, um, next year. Um, so we're actually um, putting plans in, um, planning on it internally. Uh, we're planning to put out applications by February next year. With next year's only, I was like, not till next year, but it's like, no, next year is a couple of weeks away now. So. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wow. And so, and Zinab, the event is likely the month of April or it's... Um, so yeah, it's going to be in April, but um, we are trying to see if we can get in probably like the last two weeks in March, um, just so that um, the participants can have some time to set up their work environment and things like that before um, activities fully kick off in April. Since we had a lot of people complain that they spent a lot of time trying to get that set up before they were able to contribute. So if you can give like um, two weeks head start so they could use that to get that sorted out before um, starting in April. Great, okay. Yeah. yeah. Any other topics for today? <laughs> Okay, then let's call this done. The recording will be posted probably within 24 hours. And if, you'll, if you check 
and notes will be available on community.jenkins.io. And on and the, the video, of course, will be on YouTube. Oh, Mark, one question. Um, what about this meeting for the next few weeks? Do we want to discuss? How oh, oh right, that? right. That's a good point. Next, next meeting. So today is the 16th. I will actually be available on the 23rd. So for next, next meeting, Mark is available to meet December 23. Uh, Meg, are you interested in meeting on 23 December? I'm, I absolutely am. Okay, so we will meet December How about 23. Zinab and Elizabeth are there. Elizabeth isn't going to be here regularly. Or... Yeah. Is that good for you, Zinab? Yes, that's good uh -huh. for me. Okay, now I would like to be gone. Mark is gone uh, December 30th. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so what are the dates? Let me find January. So what I'm proposing, I'm proposing we cancel for, and I'll just delete it from the calendar. The proposal is cancel December 30th. And then the next date after that would be January 6th. Six. Six. Yeah. Ah, a wonderful day in this country. Meg, does that work okay for you? It absolutely does. Okay, great. All right, we'll plan to, we'll meet again next week and then skip a week and then meet again the following week after that. And then do, Elizabeth, do you have any questions? You, you're you gonna get with Mark separately. None for now. Them. None for now, thank you, Meg. Okay, so glad to have you here. Glad to be here too, thank you. Yeah. I'm All not right. worth much, but anything I can do, don't hesitate to ask. So, okay, sure. everybody, um, till next week. Thanks, all. Right. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye.